Good day. Today we're looking at some advertising and we're asking ourselves, what do all of these pictures have in common? Well, they're certainly advertising, but what they're all also doing is using persuasive techniques, otherwise known as propaganda. Now, what is propaganda? Those are techniques that are used to influence opinions, emotions, attitudes, or even a person's behavior. So when we take a look at advertising and its elements of propaganda, um, a lot of times we're going to be seeing a lot of bold colors. We're going to be seeing a lot of bold words that are supposed to inflect a sense of emotion. For example, we have a couple here from earlier times uh, from our government where we were worried about communism. And so we see an Is This Tomorrow America Under Communism, where it looks like there's a lot of fighting and our American flag is in flames. That is supposed to invoke a sense of fear. Right before that, during World War II, now we have a, a person who's supposed to be the average American. And on either side, you have a Japanese and a Nazi uh, so, uh, officer, it looks like we even have you know, leaders who are telling you to not fall for their enemy propaganda. Their propaganda would be against our government and our allies and against certain Christian ideals. So when we look at persuasive techniques, we want to start by discussing what is persuasion. Now persuasion is generally an appeal of emotion. You're not using your intellect. You are trying to appeal to somebody's emotions. They are attempting to change your behavior and to guide your decisions and choices. Well, then who uses propaganda? Well, the military certainly uses propaganda. We see an example on the right-hand side. The media, certainly. We've already seen some advertising. The politicians, when we looked at the ideals of communism and our World War II propaganda that came from the government, and even you and I could use propaganda. There are several different types of propaganda techniques called the bandwagon technique, the testimonial, the loaded word, a misuse of statistics, name calling or stereotyping, the plain folks appeal, the snob appeal, and transfer propaganda. Starting with the bandwagon technique. The bandwagon technique appeals to your emotions by saying, everybody is doing it, you should do this too. One of the examples that we have as a classic bandwagon technique is on the McDonald's signs, usually they would say over billions and billions served. They'll have a large number telling you over 99 billion have been served. Everybody is eating at McDonald's. You should do it as well. The next would be the testimonial. Now, a testimonial would be quotations or endorsements which connect a famous person or a respectable person with a product or item. So you might have an actress or a singer giving us some ideas about fashion or, or cosmetics. Maybe perhaps you're going to have uh, an actor or a sports person tell us about the different types of products that they use to keep themselves healthy and clean. The next type is the loaded word. Loaded words are going to be adjectives in which you are going to be hyping up a specific product, something that is new, something that has been improved. It has to be the best, like built Ford Tough or Coke, the best just got better. Another type of propaganda would be the misuse of uh, statistics. One of the most common cliched ones would be the one on the right hand side. Four out of five dentists recommend sugarless gum for patients who chew gum. And we also have one on the cheers box. Lower your cholesterol by 4% in six weeks. Now this doesn't mean that the statistic is false, but it's probably based on a falsehood. For example, with Trident, they could pick their dentists I have a feeling they asked more of out of than five dentists. So what if we told you it was 
4,000 out of 5,000 dentists that were actually polled, or 40,000 out of 50,000 dentists that were actually polled. But they took that statistic and saying, well, 40,000 out of 50,000, we can just round that down to four out of five. The next type of propaganda would be name calling or even stereotyping. Now, this is often used by politicians, and it's supposed to smear or damage an opponent and their policies. For an example, in a campaign speech to a logging company, a congressman referred to his environmentally conscious opponent as a tree hugger. So instead of saying that he likes the environment and that he is very conscious and wants to help, that would be something positive about your opponent. So we're going to use a name calling by calling him a tree hugger, which has a negative connotation. The next type of propaganda would be the snob appeal. Now, snob appeal aims to flatter people and insinuates that this product is better than others, that not everybody can own one, and if you own one, they're going to flatter you by saying you must be better. Um, you might be even ahead of the times. You'll be the first in your community or the first in your group to have it such as the ultimate driving machine. You should own a Lexus sports car because not everyone can have it. Be the first to have it. The opposite of that is known as the plain folks appeal. Now, a lot of times people who might be elite or people who might be avant-garde are trying to make themselves look more like the plain folks, making yourself look more like everybody else. And so this is a convincing method to show they're just like the common people, like everybody else. It is very opposite of snob appeal. And so a lot of times you'll see politicians do this. They'll go shopping at Target. They'll meet with a, a local community group. And then finally, we have the transfer. And that means that feelings that could be positive or negative are being transferred to something else. Now, transfer tries to make you view something in the same way as they view something else. For example, politicians will use this a lot when we'll perhaps say that somebody who is very positive and somebody who is, is very uh, uh, great, you might perhaps give them a negative connotation. For example, in the Kerry versus Bush campaign, an internet email circulated showing the physical characteristics between the candidate John Kerry and a Frankenstein monster, which would have a negative connotation. So let's see if we can figure out from the different types of ads which propaganda technique is being used. So when we say Tuff has a fresh new scent, the super degreaser now has an enticing lavender and lemon fragrance for Ajax, we're using a loaded word. We have the sense of new and tough and fresh. There's so many adjectives that it's almost confusing. Is it new? Is it fresh? Is it tough? Is it enticing? They're so, they're, they're just loaded with words. The next ad that we have here has Justin Bieber holding up a, a different type of uh, cosmetic in order to help have clear skin. And so because we have a famous person, we're going to call this a testimonial. Now, which propaganda technique is being used for this ad for Gatorade? Because this is Michael Jordan, who happens to have Gatorade splashed about his face as if he is sweating out his Gatorade. Uh, Michael Jordan is a very famous basketball player. It would be a testimonial. So then what technique is being used in this ad for an iPod when it talks about the power and the simplicity of a G5, now for song playing, the all new iPod. 20,000 songs in your pocket. The power of it, the simplicity of it, the all new, lots of adjectives, very loaded words. Next, what type of propaganda technique is being used in this following ad? 
Well, this is a political advertisement, and we have President Barack Obama, uh, and it's actually being used in a negative light. This wouldn't have been something that his campaign would have put out. It would have been probably from the opposites, because it says snob. It's an elitist thing you wouldn't understand. Because they're trying to show that he should be different than the plain folks or the common folks, they're, we're going to call that name-calling. Now, what type of propaganda technique is used in this ad? It says, every cat dreams about great flavor combinations. Frisky dry cat food with multi-flavor combo pieces. Every cat, every single one, every cat is eating friskies? That must be a bandwagon appeal. Every cat has it, every cat likes it, therefore your cat should have it as well. Next, we're not even going to rely on any words. We don't even have to rely on the advertisers to put in the word for Nike. We just have their swoosh symbol and a very famous basketball player showing off his particular Nike. So we have a testimonial here. So what type of propaganda technique is used in this following ad? Well, we have expect more and pay less, which would be the target's ad for itself. But then we also have best dressed, using Waverly Home a fresh look at a classic design. Lots of adjectives again, expect more, pay less, best dressed, fresh look, classic designs. That's a lot of adjectives. Must be loaded words once again. Now, what type of propaganda technique is used in this ad? It's unbelievable. It's new. It's thick and creamy. It's a new yogurt. It's thick, it's rich, and it's light. That would be a bunch of adjectives. So once again, we have loaded words. And what type of propaganda technique are we using in this following ad? Again, we don't have any words, but we have a picture of an awful lot of people. Lots and lots of people. People who are on their computers, so they look like business people. People in hard hats, so they are working outside as construction. We've got just normal, ordinary, everyday people in the background. Just everybody apparently wants to use this particular phone. So if everybody's on the bandwagon, it must be a bandwagon technique. And what type of propaganda is this? 95% of homework assigned is busy work. It's not beneficial to the student. Well, whose homework are we taking a poll of? And are we polling students? Are we polling teachers? Where did this statistic come from? Since we don't know why or how this statistic was used and how it was gathered, this would be a misuse of statistics. How about the next one, the beautiful Chrysler? Well, we have a very beautiful font, and then we have this very snobby looking, very elitist, very expensive looking Chrysler ad in which we have the, uh, the, the ornaments that you would put on the front of a very expensive car. Definitely a snob appeal. Once again, we just have the advertisement saying what particular product it is for Gillette Venus. We're not showing off the product though. We are showing off a famous person that you would hope would be holding the product, but since JLo would be very, very famous, Jennifer Lopez apparently is testimonial for a Gillette Venus product. Again, sometimes they don't even need to show the product if it is an extremely famous person. So here now we have an advertising uh, for a particular uh, movie. And so when we have you are nobody until you're talked about for Gossip Girl and we have the word loser written across the actor's face. 
that would be name calling. Now, they are trying to attract you to watch their particular series, but we're also telling you in specific what to think about this particular character when you begin watching. So that is definitely name calling. Here we have a very old advertisement to let you know propaganda has been around for a very long time. It says, by appointment, those who desire the best of everything invariably ask for a service salt supplied to the House of Lords. Well, that would be only for certain people who could afford it, and that would be a snob appeal. The next type of propaganda, when we see that we have whole grain from uh, you know, General Mills, kid tested, it's mother approved, these crispy corn puffs, no added colors, no added flavors, there's a lot of adjectives again everywhere. There's a lot to see. It is very loaded. And that will do for our loaded words and for our other propaganda techniques. Thank you so much for stopping by to learn about propaganda. If you'd like to learn more about language, come down back to the channel. I always have more videos for you to learn. Thanks for stopping by.